Jay-Z and Kanye West's relationship has hit a rough patch. Hove unleashed some yay subliminals on the 444 track, Kill Jay-Z. But you got hurt cause you did cool by yay. You gave him 20 million without blinking. He gave you 20 minutes on stage. What was he thinking? Two days after that song was released, it was reported Kanye is leaving Tidal, claiming he still owed $3 million from the streaming service. But from their history of competitiveness and shady exchanges, maybe we should have seen this coming all along. The two first met in the year 2000, after Kanye produced This Can't Be Life for Jay-Z's The Dynasty, Rock La Familia album. Although they often made magic together, they were at odds creatively right off the bat. And I heard it and I was thinking like, man, I really want more like a simple type Jay-Z. I ain't want like the, the, the more introspective, complicated rock, or in my personal opinion. Kanye signed to Jay-Z and Dame Dash's Rockefeller Records as their in-house producer. But when it came to seeing Kanye as a rapper, Hove was one of the many to count Ye out. Jay told Time, We all grew up street guys who had to do whatever we had to do to get by. And then there's Kanye, who to my knowledge has never hustled a day in his life. I didn't see how it could work. Fast forward to 2006, Jay-Z collaborated with Coldplay on the track Beach Chair. Kanye took issue with the collaboration, as evidenced on Big Brother. I told Jay I did a song with Coldplay. Next thing I know, he got a song with Coldplay. In 2011, Kanye and Jay teamed up to deliver one of hip hop's most beloved collab albums, Watch the Throne. But according to Hove, in an interview with Zane Lowe, an argument between them almost got in the way of the album. Uh, as soon as I thought we had wrapped up um, Watch the Throne, I made two records. I, I had two records. I had Holy Grail and I had Oceans. And I played those records for Kanye and he was like, no, those have to go and watch the throne. So we spent four days arguing about those records. Literally <laughs> arguing four days, but and, and, you know, not, not like fighting. Well, oh, it was some pushing at one point. Since that album, their differences have become more public. In 2013, Jay-Z worked with Justin Timberlake on his song, Suit and Tie. Shortly after JT's single hit the airwaves, Kanye dissed a song in what would become the first of many onstage events concerning Jay-Z. And I got love but hope but I ain't fucking with that suit and tie. When Magna Carta Holy Grail dropped on July 4th, 2013, and everyone on Twitter was talking about Jay's new album, Kanye logged on to tweet his excitement about a movie. Ye tweeted, I saw a pre-screening of Pacific Rim yesterday, and it's easily one of my favorite movies of all time. Thanks, Kanye. Then came Kanye's wedding to Kim Kardashian in May 2014. Although he was slated to attend, and some reports even named Jay-Z as the best man, Hov and Beyonce skipped the wedding altogether and instead took a trip to the Hamptons. Kanye addressed the matter in an interview with GQ. It doesn't even matter to me whatsoever who would show up because the most important person to show up there, to me, was Kim. And that's all that matters to me. That sounds good, but may not have really been the case. A month after Jay-Z skipped the wedding, Kanye performed at Bonnaroo and made it a point to omit Jay-Z's name from his performance of Cold, Blood on the Leaves, and Touch the Sky. In 2015, Jay-Z launched Tidal, the first artist-owned music streaming service. In 2016, Kanye, who was present at the title launch, announced his upcoming album, The Life of Pablo, would be available exclusively on the platform and nowhere else. But a couple of months later, you guessed it, the album showed up on Spotify, Apple Music, and Kanye's own website. This caused a further divide between Ye and Hove, who owns Tidal. Then came summer 2016, where we saw the weird throne placement on Drake's song, Pop Style, a track where Jay-Z only has two bars. During the Seattle stop of the Life of Pablo tour in October 2016, Kanye explained what happened to the rest of Hove's verse. Then Jay thought about it out of respect for me, Phil, so he didn't want to be on the track. And I said, look, I call Drake, I call me, I call y'all, we got a sponsorship, we got to let people have this song. But then it went out of that territory, it went into some title, some, 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 some shit, some political shit about percentages on songs. I can't take this shit, bro. In that same rant, 
Kanye mentioned that there will never be a Watch the Throne 2 and expressed his hurt over Jay-Z's response to Kim Kardashian's Paris robbery. You call me after the robbery, you say how you feeling. You want to know how I'm feeling, come by the house. Days later, Rockefeller Records co-founder Kareem Biggs Burke told Page Six, I spoke to Jay after Kanye's rant and we're both just like, we miss the old Kanye. In November 2016, Kanye hit the stage to rant yet again. Only this time, he included Beyonce in his list of complaints alongside Jay-Z. Beyonce, I was hurt. Because I heard that you said you wouldn't perform unless you won video of the year over me and over Hot My Play. Jay-Z called me, hey bro, Jay-Z, I know you got killers. Please don't send them out my head. Just call me. Like Jay-Z stayed relatively silent over the situation until his latest album, 444, was released June 30th, 2017. Where it is, there's three more songs coming from Jay-Z on the physical release of 444. Perhaps there'll be more insight on Jay's fallout with Kanye. We'll have to wait and see. I'm Insanul for Genius News, bringing you the meaning and knowledge behind the music.